give me all of them. Yes. All of them. Take all of those as well. And all of these. I think I'm okay. Marvels. Cool. So that's our fairies updated. And that is our supply of zone. I stuff done. That is a Vico, so I'm not gonna worry about him. Right, next is Ooh, actually what I can do. Picture the Dueling Peak Stable. That's what we're going to do. Hello. Da, 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 da. Okay. And Blue suddenly appears in a weird time and place to tell me to stretch again because I only stretched about half an hour ago, but whatever. I will accept it. It's like I'm on a crafty course all of a sudden. Right, so is Zelda still a sage in law since she was in Ocarina of Time? Yes, she is. She is the sage of time. She is also the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, holder of the sacred, power, sacred powers of the goddess Hylia, um, a dragon, and um, princess when she should be queen, and oh yes, a school teacher. Oh, and stealer of houses! Stretch my wrists while I'm at it. A pirate named Tetra. No, Tetra is awesome. She's also a ghost in spirit tracks. I liked that. I liked that. It was nice to have Zelda go on a quest with us. There's a great fairy over there. I need to visit her also. Zelda was Tetra. No, Tetra was Zelda. Tetra was actually Tetra, and she was just turned into the Princess Zelda. Whereas this Zelda is ba I have more time for Tetra than I have for this Zelda. Because this Zelda has basically just pratted around for five years, being a princess with no responsibility, just setting up a school in one single village for a small group of children. You'll give me that for a uh, fairy tonic, right? I love those beetles. Uh, no, piss off. Really, you turn down deer like that? Hmm. It's going to be like that. Maybe we can hear you wait until night. Yes, call him. No, no, no. No, hire thief to do it. Yes, beetle. Yes, I'll do it. I'll do it while he's got it. Yes, beetle. <laughs> oh, oh, don't mind me. Just, just, just let me know if you wish to change your mind. Buff Beetle is here. Buff Beetle is here. Buff Beetle is also slightly crazy in this one. Ah. Well then, can I tempt you to buy, or at least are you selling today? Maybe there's poison. I, I assure you, it's not poison. Uh, look what I've got. Ooh, ah, oh, where is it? Um. 999 bright bloom seeds. Uh, it's not poison. Oh, take a swig of whiskey. No, well, technically it is, but it's a very nice poison. Also, hail cat. Hail last minute continued. Cheers. So, the Hori split pad, yeah. Uh, since one of my bumper buttons broke in my con uh, my current controller. Oh, this is my original controller that I got when I first got my Switch, which is a Gen One Switch actually, the hackable one. I could hack it if I so wish, but I'm not going to because I need it. Um, tell you what though, if I was ever going to replace my Pro controller, I'd go for the Hall Effect one. I forget the actual model. You can get it on Amazon, but. They made a pro controller, uh, a third party made a Switch pro controller, but they use Hall, of, uh, ha Hall Effect joysticks. 
So rather than the membrane ones and the switches that these use, they actually use magnets. You can also get them for the Steam Deck, but I, one when I've saved up for them, I will get them for my Steam Deck, but it requires a bit of soldering, and my soldering skills are um, rather rusty. Also, I'm contemplating... What about 999? Which is all of them! That'll be 1,009. Yeah, okay. Have all of them. I'll, I'll, I'll find a more. Bye! I technically need to cook up a bunch of food as well, but it's raining, so I can't. Um, instead, I am going to talk to this man in the state. Oh, no, actually. I'm going to talk to this picture frame. Oh, hurry split pad. Sorry, it's just dawned on me. You're talking about um, the Switch Joy-Cons, which aren't actually Joy-Cons. They're like a Pro Controller split in half with the proper analog joystick. So yeah, I've got that one of those as well. It's over there. I can't be bothered getting it. Yep, that works as well. Used it in a few games. I tend, I, I switch back and forth. I still have my Joy-Cons for if I'm playing something like Ace Attorney because I just need the buttons. Whereas if it was when I was playing through Gungal, because of course I've played through Gungal or Gungal Returns at any rate, I had the Hori controllers because it was just easier to aim with the analog sticks. The analog sticks are gone. Just chewed them. Did you chew them or did Bobby chew them, Blue? Because never mind. <laughs> What was I saying? Oh yes, the Hori controls. Very good. Very useful for FPSs. Uh, the button broke during the damn boss fight in Eastwood, which is a great game. Fair enough, but I don't think I have time to play any new games. Though I really want to get Super Mario Wonder, which I'm probably going to do because I have um, I sold a bunch of old DVDs that I got from... Well, my sister got them, but I inherited them. Inherited. They were in the loft. Look, they were basically in the loft, so... Whatever, we, we ended up with a bunch of old junk Blu-rays and DVDs from when the local Blockbuster closed down. Ten years ago, I think? It was a long time ago, at any rate. So I sold them to the new CEX, which is opened in the town centre. Got some money, not much, but I'm going to put that towards Super Mario Wonder because I've come up with an ingenious ploy, because I'm a tight-fisted git, apparently. If you don't want to buy new, when in fairness, buying new does support the game sales, which indicates the Nintendo more people want to buy it. But then again, in this day and age, you also have a count of how many people are actively playing the game. So maybe that counteracts it and balances out. Long story short, a lot of people buy a game new, play it through once and then sell it onto a secondhand store so they can get a bit of money for them. And that's where we can come in. If you wish to get a new game, buy secondhand. If you have stuff to trade in, trade it in, and then you get a discount, and then you save money. And isn't that the greatest joy of all? Actually, I can think of several other greater joys, but it certainly helps one's bank account. Blockbuster went out of business in the US around 20 years ago. Good times. They still exist in Europe, but they very much went out of business in the UK a long time ago as well. Uh, no, that wasn't that long ago. Hmm. A point, well, 20 years. It wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things, but at the same time, blimey. It makes me smile thinking of seeing that beautiful sunrise over Laurel and Village from the summit of Tuft Mountain. I would love to paint a view for myself, but I'm afraid my job comes first. That, and alas, I was traumatised after my brother got very, very attached to Lord Ganondorf. I mean, very attached. Have you spoken to the man? I can see in that the depths of your eyes. Yes, you have had the unfortunate. He was fine until he ate that random acorn. He said it was handed to him by a hand with an eyeball in its palm. Ah, if you ever come across such things, do me a favor, young man. Stab it very hard in the face with that giant sword of yours. Maybe then I can find peace for my brother's dismay. Maybe one day he will stop talking about Lord Ganondorf's pecs. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. Yes, photos, pictures, uh, paintings of sunrises. That, that, yes. Mm, no, wait, you have a picture of the finest sunrise? Can I see it?
This one. Oh. Ah, ah, ah! That is exactly the picture I asked for. Great Scott, you're a genius. This would really liven up the place. May I paint a copy? Yes. Oh. Thank you. This is it. Tyrell's best sunrise over Laurelin. What a majestic, what a majestic, what a majestic sight. What breathtaking natural splendor. Thank you, Link. Thank you for bringing me such an amazing sight. Now, just give me a moment to whip up a reproduction. Ha <laughs> ha, don't worry, I'm quite good at this, I promise. They call me the Bob Ross of Hyrule, you know. Oh. Ah. I knew it'd be perfect. Thank you, young man. Doesn't it look spectacular? It wasn't the easiest painting I've ever done, but what of you? If you can top that with another picture of Hyrule's finest sunrise, I'm happy to accommodate. So, if you're ever stuck, struck by the edge to replace the picture, don't be shy about it. Show me something new. Show my appreciation, I'm giving you one whole pony point. It's like rupees, but it's an undecentralized currency. Ah. We stable people are hoping to dethrone the government. Not that there's much of a government. Have you heard what the princess is doing with our taxes? Oh. It amazes me people still have the disc for the Wii Netflix app. Uh, they probably still have the disc for the, the majority is probably they still have the disc because they've left it on their game shelf and forgot about it. <laughs> and so much as collectors. I don't know where it is. I think it's in the loft. But I still have a hack disc for my Wii. Because when they brought out Smash Bros. Brawl, it was like... It was a really weird one. It's like they brought it out in North America and then six months later it came out in the UK. So my way around that, because I really wanted to play it, was I bought the US version, but I had to get a special disc alongside it, which you basically put in your Wii first. It was like a GameCube sized disc. You put that in your Wii first, that loads into memory a hacking, a, a, a cracker of sorts. Then you swap that out for Smash Bros. Brawl. The problem is, the entire game was in monochrome. It was it was completely black and white when I played it, which was fine. I still survived. I managed to play it, and it was all right. But yeah, I had to. I've still got the disc. I think Nintendo patched it later on, so it doesn't work. But at the same time, I've got the legitimate EU release copy of Smash Bros. Brawl anyway, so it's neither here or there. But I've still got those. I've still got those original discs upstairs. Right, while we're at it, hello. Ah. Yes, I don't. I don't care about the weather. Well, I do. I'm British, ah. but at the moment, I I'm just looking for the Midianya bed. Yes, thank you. Morning, please. Oh. I am the god of the horsey warsey. Mm. Have you ever seen Mr. Bean? What a scum of a man, but very entertaining. Who says I, God of the Horsey Warsey? I tried playing the Xbox 360 in say, uh, sepia, monochrome, and two other color colorblind configurations. Not easy or fun. Yeah, fair enough. I, you see, the thing is, I'm colorblind, but I never oh. play games in colorblind mode. Because, what does it matter? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. To... The only time, no, I sorry, I stand corrected. The only time I will play a game in colorblind mode is if it's something like Battlefield, because at default, the what colors do they use? I think they use blue for your squad. No, hold on. They use red for the enemies, and they use orange for your teammates or your squad or something. But to me, because of my color blindness, those shade, those colors are pretty much identical. So unless I look really hard at them, so I usually ended up with friendly fire. So I turn on the co well, on the colorblind mode, which shunts them around. So I get a clear idea of oh right, they're the enemies and those are otherwise. When I tried it with a hat in time, didn't like it. I don't care if the colors don't match up. The colors I see are perfectly adequate, so I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I remember doing that with the original PlayStation by having a chip, bo uh, chip box in the back, blue tack over where the door gear is. Tell PlayStation it was closed, put the proper disc in to a certain point, and then I put in the pirate disc. Oh. Buy me. Something about Big Frog Prince. Blah, blah, blah. Right, okay, so we've done that. Next. Uh... Right, we've restored our health. Oh, right, yes, it stopped raining, so I can go and cook a meal now. Now, what was the recipe for money? It was cook five, wasn't it? I had six cables that were red, yellow, green, and blue. One was uh, one was used twice, unless we had the white cable. So the that's how I had colorblind mode. Okay, fair enough. That was just built into games. But it, like I said, it's not often I use colorblind mode. Very rarely, very very rarely. I mean, it, because my the, my color blindness is red green. Green and brown look weird, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. I can tell Link's tunic is green, so... Ah, last. Oh, but I wanted rupees. Oh, well. Beetle! If you can save yourself threatening my life for a moment, I wish to sell you some stuff. Eh, sure. Yay! Wow! Yay! There we go. Nope. Well, right, there was a great fairy fountain around here as well, wasn't there? Yeah, all the way over there. I'm going to try and swim, but I can't be bothered because I think the current might be a bit strong. I had a pirate copy. Who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, it ended up being really confused because it was the uh, Reggie Phil uh, Reggie Philbin, and not Chris Tarrant on the OG PlayStation. Blimey! Or currently Jeremy Clarkson. Well, I say currently. I don't know. I've not watched it, but apparently he ho he was hosting Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, at least within recent memory. Right, let's talk to the giant furry woman with the huge eyes and find out if we can actually upgrade any of our gear. He still hosts it. Ah, fair enough. Ooh. Ah. I have enough to upgrade only one of these things. Ooh, but I can upgrade this. Hmm. Right, this is going to take me a while, isn't it? Yes, I don't need you to tell me what set bonuses are, sweetheart. I have done it many, many times at this point.
If you had a mastermind special subject, what would it be? Oh, that's a question. <laughs> hmm. Probably have to be something gaming related. Mission of Zelda, I suppose, but I wouldn't do very well at it, I'm sure. Hmm. <laughs> oh dear, right. Cat of the Wild? No, I need Ferocious. Two Ferocious Scale. Oh, this is going to be. Right. Mm. 20 luminous stone? Mm. Not Doctor Who. Oh. Oh, that is a point chat. Would it be Doctor Who? It probably. I don't know that much classic Who. That's the thing. I know a lot of new Who. Unfortunately, I know probably more than I want to of Whitaker's era, but this is a good point. Yeah, it'd be a toss-up between Zelda or New Who, uh, Zelda or Doctor Who, I suppose. After Twilight, I'm mm. sure. Mm. Star fragments are something you should start farming. Star fragments are something I should start farming, but let's be honest here. What I'm probably going to do is once the Korok seeds are done and dusted, we're basically changing tack from Korok seeds to part farming for the armor upgrades. I'm only doing this intermittently to try and save my sanity because, as we can see, upgrading all the gear is a pain in the neck. So, yeah. What I might have to do is just star farm, dragon farm, and then go through all the gear and try and work out what I'm missing. Because it's it's not going to be fun. It's really not going to be fun. Anyway, where are we? Uh, okay. So, let us see. We have done this area. So, first things first... Just to help us out along the way, eh? Ah, oh, right, okay. That's just coincidence, never mind. Hmm? Oh. oh, give me a minute. Oh, never mind. Sorry, just checking on some. Right, where was I? Oh, yes. Um... Okay, so. Well, Spring of Wisdom, well, we've already done that. Do we think there's going to be a blockage there? Hopefully not. However I look at this, it's going to be a pain. The first time I ever seen Tom Baker in anything was not Doctor Who. It was Ford Boneyard. Fair enough. Fair enough.
He's still the Doctor, you know. He does all the um, big Finnish radio dramas. Same with a lot of the classic Doctor actors. I don't know if Peter Capaldi's been pulled into that yet. Possible. No. No. Maybe. Yes. Yes, okay, fine. It's not going to take us too long and I can see it right in front of me. Just one. Just one. Ooh. Or two. Which looks closest? Ah, that one. Rarity, because we've got a straight line of sight on it. Though I, uh, I know that's the, the idea is that the depths are so, the darkness and the depths are supposed to be a bit overwhelming. But seriously, that's just like I'm flying through space, which is fine, but at the same time. It disconcerting. Especially when you have to remember that there are random trees that can slap you in the face. Space is terrifying. Space is indeed terrifying, unless you're on a Federation starship. And most of the time, it's not too bad. Even better if you're in a TARDIS. There we go. Because she'll look after you. Um, Lightroot dispelled the darkness in this area, which you know what that means. Right, let's see what we've got in terms of things. Oh. Oh, wow, the dungeon map's actually putting large Zonai deposits on the, on the map now. That's interesting. I'm not going to bother with it, but it's certainly interesting. Um, right, there's a large... There's a talus there. There's a mine there, which I'm going to have to find, because if I don't, then I'm going to lose out on my 100%. Oh! Yep, that is definitely the one I was looking for. Right, and with that said... Hold on. I don't know if I'll remember, but... I will put Link there on... No, actually, I, I'm not going to risk it. I don't know if the game will... If the game corrupts my save file, that's it. It's the end of the journey, let's face it. So, uh, we'll put that there. Save. Save again. That, we will continue this next time. There we have it. Final tally. One over light. 121 shrines. 82 light roots. 788 Korok seeds. Good and bad. <laughs> oh, we're getting the 788. I've uh, used my phone. You know what? I'm, I'm curious. Unless the chat's probably going to be quicker than I am, but. So, 1000 minus 788. 212 Korok seeds left. Did I say 100, 788? Whatever. 200 and odd Korok seeds left to do. 
the land and the sky, Gordon Bennett. But our journey doesn't end there, oh heavens no, we still, after the thousand Korok seeds, we still need to make sure that we found, well, sorry, after all of the Korok seeds, we're then going to have to do all of the armor upgrades, which requires farming dragon parts and star fragments. Then we're going, once we've done the art, once we've done those, we are then moving on, actually no, once we've done those, by that point we'll have finished the main story. So after we've done all the Korok Seeds armor upgrades, after the armor upgrade sub-stories, because I'm probably going to have missed one or two of them, unless we've done them earlier in the game, also possible. The depths will have probably been done by that point because of the way we're doing things, which then leads us into the final fight. After that, it's the we wrap up the compendium because we need to do the final boss to get the last of the photos for the compendium which I keep forgetting about, so we're going to have to pay a visit to Robbie at some point to get his photos, because I'm not... I just bollocks to me finding each and every individual one. And then we beat the game, then we find out what we've missed, because it's only at that point the game will tell us what we've missed in terms of map locations, which also count to the 100%. We can't do 100% on the mini-bosses because it's glitched out. Oh well, but I don't think the mini bosses count. I, I'm pretty certain the mini bosses don't count to the 100% metric. But at this point, after I've done everything in this game, is anyone really. Well, yes. The answer is yes. People will turn around and say, oh well, you didn't actually do this mini boss. But at this point, just. I've tried my hardest! <laughs> there is a lot of game here. And it will probably be close to six months, if not more, by the time we've got through the end of this game. Especially considering that I'm, my life is quite hectic at the moment. But there it is. Also, cheers, Blue. Thank you. And then after this game... Batman Arkham Origins. Because I want to beat up some random Gothamite thugs, because that's going to be quite cathartic, I'm sure. Maybe Mario Sunshine after that. Certainly turn it to boy at some point because I owe it to Blue. And then Yakuza. Which is going to be probably a walk in the park compared to this. I'm going to be honest, even at 100 hours, which is how long our Yakuza runs usually go. We've been playing this for more than 200 hours at this point. And we're still not done. And it's just, I'm doing all of this for a golden poo. And I don't... If my sanity survives this, I will seriously be amazed. Though I suspect it has already long since flitted off into the abyss. But anyway. Anyway, anyway. With that said, if you're new here, hi, I'm Ezio. It's a pleasure to meet you. If you enjoyed what you saw, well, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that follow button. But the decision will always be yours. If you ever want to catch me live, well, I'll be right back here on oh, what day is it it's thursday isn't it so i'll be right back here on saturday at two o'clock uk time as we continue to journey into the world of this fascinating if not very big game if you've missed any of these streams however if you want to catch up with our run into the world of the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom so far or any of the other games that we've covered here on this channel you can find a link to the youtube archive in the panels down below containing playlists of every game every journey as i call them that we've ever been on here on this channel including the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the previous game, which Nintendo have decided to completely ignore for this one, so thank you, Nintendo. And, of course, the playthrough for this game. And at this point, the journey is at 366 episodes. Sweet Jesus. There we go. So there we go. The only Yakuza 4 problems are ping-pong, golf, batting, darts, and pool. So a walk in the park. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, pool. Oh, I remember Paul. Oh, yay. And golf. And now they've added ping pong, a game I have never actually been able to play in my life. Marvelous. Oh, this is going to be so fun. But that's a long way into the future, and that's future Ezio's problem. For me, however, all that's left to say is a thank you to each and every one of you. Be you a chatter, be you a lurker, be you watching live here on Twitch or in the YouTube archives. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey this evening. Thank you for joining me as we've travelled through the world of this fascinating game. And most of all, thank you for spending a little bit of your life here with me on the channel. It means the world. It always will do. And it always does. And a massive... Massive thank you to the mighty Wibloof. Thank you for the raid, my dear. You are a boss. 
Right, and with that said, let's see if there is anyone live on the raid list. Though technically, if I was smart, I'd do well, enough. Let's see, we can pay the good vibes forward, so if I was smart, I'd probably call it here. Um, ping pong is kind of easy, but your eyes will see the problem when you get there. Yay, that fills my heart with so much joy and everlasting life and love and huzzah. Ooh, Turbo's live! Right, we're going to throw a raid over to the mighty Turbo Drive Live then, as long as he's not wrapping up for the evening. No, marvellous. Right, Turbo, beware, we are raiding. I think Twitch. Right, um, <laughs> yes, I'm going to raid all of Twitch. Can you imagine? Right, there we go. Start raid. Marvellous. And with that said and done to each and every one of you, may you all have a beautiful evening, morning or afternoon, wherever it is around this whole wide world you are. And as always, until our paths next cross again, the Vortex awaits. And I'll see you all next time.